Good morning, happy Monday morning, you guys. This is video number one for the day. And on this video, we're discussing Megan's new website and Instagram where she's gonna hawk jelly. I'm not kidding, let's go. On Thursday, out of the blue, the same day as the Diana Awards, I might add, so that she can relate herself to Diana and also steal some of Diana's thunder, Megan un un opened up, unleashed a new website and a new Instagram page. She has a new lifestyle brand called American Riviera Orchard. Man, that's a mouthful. It's supposed to be by Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, established 2024. So right off the bat, she's using her royal title. The name came from the fact that Santa Barbara has been known as the, quote, American Riviera for over 100 years because of, you know, the climate and the landscape and the food and wine, et cetera, et cetera. Another article, however, says we don't call our coasts in America Rivieras. And as far as orchard, that's meant to be her home. But they're saying that the average American woman has inflation and they can't buy Megan's overpriced kitchenware. So she's on brand as ever because she's a mass of contraindications. The truth of the matter is most people are absolutely baffled because the name is word salad. Why not just say Megan's Goods, Montecito, I don't know, muffins, whatever. So people started looking a little bit closer at this new website that Megan put up. And uh, I got to tell you, I, and I'm not just saying this, okay? I'm not impressed. I don't think it's going to go well. Let me explain. Megan started by supposedly using calligraphy. I'm sorry, guys, that's not calligraphy. <laughs> it's a loopy writing, but if you look at actual calligraphy, that's not calligraphy, but she wrote the name on there. She put it on a gold backing because, you know, royalty, and the logo is, you know, somewhat regal. Now, I agree with Resting Doll Face. It's like she was going for the Dior Bumblebee trademark, but it kind of took a swerve to the side. We all know how much she loves Dior and she wanted to be the face of Dior. We also all know that that didn't work out. A big thank you to Royally Sage for pointing this out. When you put color on Megan and Harry's logo, you have HRH. So she snuck the HRH into her logo. And uh, I have to agree with the uh, Royal Rogue, who is the body language guy. That logo, according to him, looks like an escort agency. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting thought. Let's move on to what was released. Let me just say that people are screaming copycat. First of all, she's cutting flowers. Then she's standing in her kitchen cooking. Then she's in one of her ridiculous voluminous gowns in her house. And everything is blurry and kind of weird. And there's music playing in the background. And this is supposed to be, I guess it's the word is avant-garde. This is supposed to be like an avant-garde thing. Look at me, look at what I'm doing. The, the interesting thing is, okay, let's deconstruct this because this is, yeah, let's just deconstruct this, okay? First of all, they put out a trademark uh, application. Reminder, she's launched things before without getting the trademark and then it's blown back on her in a bad way. So she probably shouldn't have done that. But the trademark reveals that she's going to sell tableware, drinkware, decanters, kitchen linens, edible treats, jellies, jams, marmalades, and other words, oh, and cookbooks. So in other words, she's gone from the TIG to being royalty back to selling stuff on the internet. She's come full circle. Now, if you go to the website, they want you to put in your email address to sign up to be notified about products, also cookies. Again, they track you, they watch what you're doing, and they sell your information to third-party vendors. I already went on there and read the whole thing. So do not go on that website unless you want your inbox to be hit with a lot of spam. Now, I have to agree with Russell Myers, uh, besides the fact of the sign up, this is exactly what the queen was afraid of. This is the half in, half out. They're calling themselves royal. They're doing royal tours. They're going around doing their thing. And Charles isn't stopping it. And so they're just doing whatever they want because they know he, there'll be no pushback. 
The problem is Charles is very busy with his cancer treatment. He's busy with affairs of state. He's got other things to do. He's not paying attention to what Harry and Meghan are doing. And that's bad because it's really upsetting people. And they've essentially given themselves the half in half out life that the queen said no to. And they've monetized the royal family, which the queen said no to. Because they were unable to come up with any ideas at Netflix, Netflix is now is going to have a cooking show for Megan where she's going to make and sell her products. Netflix is turning into QVC for her. And supposedly all of the things that she's going to cook are going to go into a cookbook and a blog, which will also be up for sale. I'm not kidding. Netflix is turning into QVC. Let me cook for you. Let me show you my products and then go to my website and buy them. I guess Netflix felt like they had to get something from them. And so this is the uh, thing that they're doing. Journalist Lee Cohen went on GB News with Miss Akua, I love her, and he said that this is happening because Netflix cannot admit that they picked talented grifters in Harry and Meghan. In the end, he said, all they care about is Harry and Meghan's ability to attract viewers, but they attract attention like a car crash. It's painful to watch, he said, but you can't turn away. At which time, Nana replied, quote, it does look like that's where we're headed with these two. There'll definitely be more work on the cards in my view with Netflix and everything else. Now, we know that Ted Sarandos talked about their couple's deal with the streaming platform, saying that the documentary they did is still one of their most watched docu-times of all times, but um, they're controversial, but that's a good thing because you love them or hate them, but you're watching. Meghan Markle, I completely agree, should have Googled the name before she used it because there are several brands that pop up when you Google that name. So she's trying to, again, trademark her name and everything, but there are other companies that have this name. So it's not exclusive. Why didn't somebody check this? Now it's being said that before she even met Harry, she wanted to be like Gwyneth Paltrow. She wanted that kind of Instagram selling stuff. You know what I mean? That's, that's what she wanted. Here's the next problem. We always knew she wanted to have a website like Goop and the picture that came out shows that she totally copied Goop and Gwyneth Paltrow. Everything from the lemons to the backdrop, it's a complete copy. And may I just say that Gwyneth Paltrow is going to protect her brand, absolutely. So there, it's being said that because the Spotify deal flopped, because her 40 by 40 flopped, uh, the Netflix deal isn't doing well. They've worn out their welcome in Hollywood. That's why they're back to doing this. Because it's lazy move after lazy move. They're saying that CV, you know, for her resume stands for costly vanity. And that this is a shameless opportunistic moment to pull back the curtain, they're saying, on tablecloths and coasters. It's all over the news that on the same night as the Diana Awards, and while all of this is going on with Catherine being sick, and all of this fake family photo stuff, and even Harry and Meghan's marriage being under scrutiny, this is when she decides to launch the lifestyle brand on Instagram and announce the winner of their Digital Civil Rights Award through Archwell the same day as the Diana Award. Nobody is surprised. So I'm going to repeat myself. Harry was upset that he didn't get the uh, police protection that he wanted. So he was going to have to come in virtually. So he feels like he's being cut out of the awards because he had to talk to these people virtually. So he was like, screw it. We're going to launch my wife's Instagram and we're going to talk about Archwell on the day of my mother's award. He didn't even care that it was his mother's award. He didn't care. A little bit of information for you. Six hours in, it had 231,000 followers. But remember, when they opened Sussex Royal, it had 1 million in um, less than six hours. So it's not doing well. Now, as time went on, another 24, 48 hours. Remember what I told you about the Sussex Royal site. It's not doing well. Now, even more interesting is she started to sell products. What she's asking... 30 pounds for a tote. What is that? $38. I sell the same totes with a different design for $14 <laughs> on, my, on my page. And you see the list of things that she's doing. And if anybody was really wondering if they were selling the crown, even though the queen said it wasn't to be monetized, there you go. It's a crown logo on the bag she's selling. 
Now, an article came out saying that Megan, actually, it says she's tipped to make six figures within weeks of launching. The problem is to fund her and Harry's lifestyle because there's no money coming in from Spotify. And I don't think Netflix has given them even half of what the deal was worth. She's going to need a seven figure salary from this. And I don't see it, especially when you look at how few people have signed up on her website. I think United States is sick of her and her, nobody wants her overpriced products. All right, you guys, do me a favor, hit the like button because that helps with the algorithm. That's part of the issue that we're dealing with, that we're trying all of this stuff. But uh, go ahead and follow me on to video two. You're not going to want to miss the next one.